Martin Müller, me voy a permitir leer su currículum, él es del Medical Clinical 3 de la Medical University en Mannheim, Alemania, en el cual pues él tiene un doctorado en el impacto de los anticuerpos antilifocitos, que fue el tema de su proyecto en inmunopatogénesis de enfermedades de VIH en adultos y niños, con madre VIH positivos. El doctor Müller inicia su residencia en hematología y oncología en la institución donde actualmente está laborando, en Heidelberg, Posteriormente se especializó en medicina interna y en 2008 obtuvo el adiestramiento en estandarización de en métodos moleculares en pacientes con leucemia meloide crónica. Y desde el 2009 el doctor Müller es especialista en hematología y oncología y desde 2010 ha encabezado el laboratorio médico de la Medical Clinical Clinic 3. Ok, el doctor Müller nos va a dar, eh, como viene el programa, dos temas él no va a hacer pausa entre los temas, entonces los va a dar en continuo. Eh, entonces, el primer tema que nos va a presentar es de Standardization of Molecular Monitoring, Major Molecular Response and Complete Molecular Response. Y el segundo tema es Long Term Follow Up with Nilotinib in the Frontline Therapy of CML and DNS Clinical Trials. Eh, así que, bueno, cedo la palabra, por favor, al doctor Müller. It's my pleasure to discuss uh, two topics as uh, has been announced. So I will start with the standardization of molecular monitoring and um, we'll discuss the two terms, the major molecular response, which is more or less clear to define, and the complete molecular response, which is not that clear yet. So first of all, I would start with what do we really monitor? If we see the Philadelphia chromosome on the DNA level, and we have the mRNA transcript of bcr able and then we have the bcr able protein. And what do we measure with molecular monitoring? It's the mRNA transcript that is determined by a quantitative uh, PCR. There are several techniques and several platforms available, and you can do it in, in several uh, different uh, modifications. And uh, the one platform that we use in, in Heidelberg, Mannheim, uh, is the light cycler technology using a quantification of bcr able and in addition to judge the sample quality a housekeeping gene which is the untranslocated able or an independent housekeeping gene like beta glucuronidase why should we standardize um, in the second part of my talk i will show you all the uh, predictive values of a quantitative pcr uh, and here I just announced some of them that only standardized BCA-able monitoring has shown to predict for response in CML. The recent clinical trials all have molecular endpoints, and if you don't have a, a potent molecular lab, you cannot achieve these endpoints, which is quite, quite clear. And there's a huge variety of molecular methods leading to a considerable variation of the results, leading to a non-comparability of these results, to confusion, not only of the patients, but also of the doctors who might read a number and cannot judge it. And finally, what should never happen, suboptimal treatment decisions due to these uh, confusions. And we all know that our patients are more and more connected via internet. They will exchange their values and they will ask themselves, is my value better than the other one, even or, or just for the, for the sake that this number is lower. And I can tell you, it is not the case. And, and someone with a, with a lower number uh, in, in a PCR, able, uh, PCR, able, uh, PCR result is not necessarily uh, uh, better than the one with a higher number if they are not comparable. So there was, in the year 2006, a proposal of international CML experts, and they proposed that a value corresponding to an MMR, so a three-log reduction uh, from the iris uh, baseline, should be mathematically converted to one value, 0.1%. So three logs below 100% is 0.1%. And therefore, the international scale will be fixed to an absolute value as defined in the IRIS trial. And you all remember the IRIS trial was the trial that uh, gave rise to the, the big success of imatinib. The aim of this uh, standardization is that we get a bcr able value according to an international scale and to have a common language, uh, even though we use different technologies, by multiplying the local result with a 
local conversion factor, which has to be determined by a, a reference lab. So how can we transmit that? Uh, there, are maybe, uh, there are two major ways to align results between two labs. The first one would be uh, sending any kind of reference material from a central lab with an approved conversion factor to a participating lab, which has been adequately characterized in that reference lab, and then align the results. The second methodology would be to send aliquots the other way around, from the participating centers uh, to the reference centers, the samples are being worked up and aligned. The first methodology, sending material, reference material, to the participating, uh, participating uh, uh, laboratories is shown here. And since I'm responsible uh, to standardize as much as possible labs in all over Europe, from Lisbon to Moscow, um, these are the results of 64 labs. And you see on the left-hand side that uh, 57 of those labs showed nicely a linear correlation between the reference result uh, in our institution in Mannheim and the participating result. If this is the case, a, a conversion factor can be calculated, a preliminary, a preliminary conversion factor can be uh, uh, calculated. Nevertheless, on the right-hand side, you see an example of one of the seven uh, laboratories who didn't show that linear uh, uh, results. And so there were a major problem in uh, the technology itself. In the meantime, I can tell you that five of these seven labs have to do better by examining their technology, their methods, and reviewing them and giving some advice what to do better. But at the first sight, it was not possible to calculate a fixed conversion factor for these labs. Here you see a summary uh, what happens with these uh, 64 labs before conversion on the left-hand side and after conversion on the right-hand side. So before conversion, there's a huge variability, as you can see here, over two logs. And on the right-hand side, this um, diversity has significantly decreased after conversion. So these conversion factors need to be validated. And this is a quite laborious uh, process since um, the participating labs have to send a lot of patient samples which are in a wide range, which should cover a wide range of BCA-able expressions between 10% down to a four-log reduction. And then these results could be compared using the conversion factors from the first sample round or using a conversion factors which is just uh, freshly calculated. And this process uh, ends up in uh, giving out certificates from the European Leukemia Net um, uh, which, which has been done since December 2010 to 52 uh, certificates and to 44 laboratories since now. And this was the, t uh, the situation in the year 2002 when only the UK lab in London was one of the IRIS labs, one of the four IRIS labs all over the world. And in 2006, our lab in Mannheim uh, came along and uh, the Belgium and Italy had uh, two more uh, reference labs. But uh, since 2007, when we've been in charge uh, of implementing or uh, promoting uh, the standardization all over Europe uh, within a project called UTOS for CML, European Outcomes uh, Treatment and Outcome Study for CML, a joint venture between the European Leukemia Net and Novartis Oncology, there are four, uh, 64 participating laboratories in 28 European countries, as you can see here. The definition of CMR, of a complete molecular response, is not that easy. There's one trial which takes place in Europe. It's called the NIST FIRST trial. And it's the first trial that has the primary objective of achieving a complete molecular response after 18 months of treatment. The the important thing of this study was at the start of the study, it was not even clear what the definition would be of a CMR in that context. So one of the major tasks was to agree on a common definition within uh, the special situation that 13 labs were announced, the 13 best labs all over Europe were announced to be the monitoring labs for this study, which now recruited 1,000 patients. So complete molecular response is generally understood to mean 
undetectable disease. That's what, what you feel. Complete means undetectable disease. But what is not clear on the first sight is that this depends on how hard you look. There's a huge variability of sample quality within a center, and there's also a, a considerable variability of assay sensitivity between the centers. And therefore, we needed a definition which takes into account the sample quality, the sensitivity which can be achieved in one respective sample. And therefore, the decision for this study, at least, is that a CMR would be a disease either detectable or undetectable below a defined sensitivity level. And the next slide shows that these three definitions are new uh, definitions for to qualify the level. So a CMR with superscript 4 means a 4 log reduction, so a value equally or less than 0.01% according to the international scale. CMR 4.5 is a 4.5 log reduction and below that uh, level. And a CMR 5 would be a more than 5 log reduction, less than 0.001%. So what is the reason then? I, I told you it's either negative or positive below these re, uh, re, uh, respective levels. And what is necessary to call a sample in, M, in CMR 4 shows this on, on the right side. The minimum sample quality, which would be required to call a BCR able negative sample in CMR4 would be 10,000 able copies. Because one BCR able divided by 10,000 is 4 log reduction, is 0.01%. For the 4.5 log reduction, you need half a log more than, uh, than 10,000, it's 32,000 able copies. And to qualify for CMR5, you need 100,000 able copies. And if you ask me if this is achievable, 